Live from Fox 13 Studios, this is Fox 13's Good Day Utah. We're talking about eye problems this morning, you know, the kind where you can't see yourself going to work. That's right. Have <laughs> <laughs> you ever used that one? It's contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Here it's we are. It's spreading. <laughs> okay, actually different. Uh, an expert here has some important tips that we're going to find out a little bit later in the show. And ways to prevent it, because I learned something new this morning, that myopia, you can actually give yourself this eye condition. So we're going to tell you how huh. to prevent it, especially with your kids. Well, while the number of children experiencing vision problems is growing every year, conditions like nearsightedness go largely unnoticed. So here to talk with us about your children's eyes is optometrist Dr. Paul Bruderer. March, in fact, is Save Your Vision Month. And so we're wanting to let parents know what they should look out for to catch myopia, which is nearsightedness. That's correct. Okay, so explain um, what you look for. What we look for in finding nearsightedness? Well, we obviously we're checking how the eyes focus and, and how the light enters the eye. Nearsightedness is typically caused by either the eyeball being a little too long or the curvature in the front of the eye being a little, little off and how the light focuses. You look for signs in, in kids especially of um, getting close to things like the TV, squinting at things, um, bringing things too close when they read or look at a tablet. We do know that nearsightedness or myopia is most often diagnosed about 75% of the time in school-aged children, and I mean elementary and preschool-aged children. So I was reading the notes for this. I was kind of, I learned something new. I didn't know that you can actually get this, you can give this to yourself with your habits. I thought it was just merely genetic. No, genetic plays a part. We know. We don't know exactly all the details of why nearsightedness happens. We know that if both parents are nearsighted, their child is more likely to be nearsighted. But we also know that kids and adults that are highly focused on doing near tasks, tablet, reading, computer, phone, are, have a much higher likelihood of developing nearsightedness as well. As well. Wow, that's it's so interesting. So, um, as far as treating myopia, well, let me go back a little bit. If this is going undiagnosed or parents don't know their children have it, aren't the stats one in four? One in four kids have an undetected vision problem. Oh, yes. an undetected vision problem. Then um, what can that lead to? What, what other sorts of problems? Well, certainly there's problems in school. Studies show that kids with undiagnosed myopia or other vision problems have behavior problems in school, reduced learning. Um, sometimes they get diagnosed with learning disabilities when they really don't have a learning disability, they have a vision problem. So interesting. So what do you do to try to counteract this then? I mean, you say that I mean, you have a chance of getting it if you're looking too close at things, reading a lot, or looking at your screens too much. It, it, can you combat it by just not doing those things and getting outdoors I, more? Absolutely. I think there's things we can do. We know myopia is on the rise. We also know that close tasks are on the rise exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, we all spend more time on tablets, phones, and everything than we should, especially kids. If you don't want your kids to have a higher likelihood to get myopia, then get them outside. Get them away from all the close tasks. I get that they'll do it. My kids do it too. but. They need a chance to be outside. Kids are outside less and less. Mm -hmm. Have them play soccer. Have them do something. Take up something in the car. Play I Spy. Play a plate game instead of just let them put on headphones and look at their phone for the whole car ride. Will myopia correct itself if you stop doing those things? Or is it something once you have it, you need to see an optometrist? Yeah, once you have it, you need to see it. But what we're finding is kids who do those things, it progresses much, much more rapidly. And you start to get severe problems, really thick glasses, really bad eyes that probably could have been controlled a little bit. We also have ways with certain special kinds of glasses and contact lenses to try and slow it down or halt it in its tracks. So instead of having severe myopia, you might have a mild or moderate case as an adult. So something tells me you just go to the eye doctor to figure it out. It certainly will help. <laughs> I, 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 I'm super grateful for school screenings with school nurses and pediatricians, but they are not a substitute for a full eye exam by a real optometrist or a real eye doctor. At what age should you go? I highly recommend 
that they definitely get their eyes checked before they go into preschool or kindergarten. Oh, really? That Absolutely. early? Absolutely. If, if with my kids, I check their eyes at six months. Uh -huh. I know they're kind of not going to tell me what's better, one or two. Yeah. But I'm making sure <laughs> things are developing correctly. <laughs> and then uh, there after that, I, I try to see them every year. But I think knowing for sure before they start school, that's important. And then at least every year or two after that, unless there's a problem, then you do it more often. Mm, Dr. Um, Bruder, very good info this morning. Thank Stuff you. I just had no idea. We all know it so well what you say. And three and four. I know. Back again, three and four. I know. You probably know so. about three books about that. <laughs> so I get it. Well, thanks for doing it. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Let's